Hey guys, I am officially a Sand Wraith Assassin supporter. I've supported GGG over the years, first, way back in Harbinger League, and then again in Delirium. I bought a pack in 2022 to fund some more stash tabs at the time, and then I bought some another pack back in Crucible. This here is the biggest and most expensive pack I have purchased. I'll play around with the cosmetics soon. Maybe I'll even finally buy a map tab. I've mentioned before, I actually don't have a map tab. I, I just hold control on each map. I've never bothered getting a map tab, never felt I needed it. This pack, though, the Sand Wraith Assassin Supporter, uh, puts this fancy $480 badge on my account, and it allows me uh, some interesting things. It allows me to track life force spent at the Hoarder Crafting Bench and adds a counter for rares and uniques so that I can do some analysis of ways to juice up maps with monster rarity. But I think the coolest thing about this pack is the ability to add my own custom map to the game's drop pool. This map will fall like a Voidborn Reliquary Key, very rare, out of a Valdo's Puzzle Box. The mods that we're going to pick affect how common this particular map will be. And on completing this Tier 17 map, the player will get a guaranteed unique drop with the shiny foil coloring. Despite some people out there calling this some kind of pay-to-win, the map will not be given to creators of the map or supporters of the pack. Uh, I'll have to find it myself, which is horribly rare and extraordinary, or buy it from someone on the trade site myself with Divine Orbs. Now some of the mod pool choices we will make would make the map impossible to run. Here's what some Sandwraith assassins will pick, some of the trolls, some of the griefers as uh, Sir Gog calls them. They'll pick a shitty map layout like Cell's map, and then of course put on Mageblood as the reward, a foiled Mageblood, and then add their foil color of their choice. Uh, but some of these mods are seriously fucked. A lot has been talked about with this one right here. There, there's concern that someone will offer to pay someone for help with their map completion, bring an experienced player into their portal, and the mods will be so fucked that they will die and go into a Void League, which is much more harsh than a Hardcore Death. In Hardcore Deaths, of course, you go straight to Standard. In a Void League, your character is totally unplayable. I have a character there from Endless Delve. You can still look up the gear of the character, from the official POE site, but uh, the character itself is no longer playable. You cannot access it. You cannot log into it. It's equivalent to a real death of the character. Let's look through some of the other mods. Uh, here's one. Area becomes lethal after some time. Monsters have 20% culling strike against you, as if they're all slayers. Only one portal into the map. You can't die, or you lose the map. You deal 10% less damage per equipped item. Rare and unique monsters are possessed by three to four tormented spirits each. Area contains the Feared, which is the very difficult map, which was the combo of its Ziri, Shaper, Elder, Venerius from the Cortex, and Chayula. You can also add Porcupines. You can have monsters petrify your character for four seconds when you are hit. Cannot gain flask charges. Imagine that. Imagine running that on tier 17. You can buff rares with additional mods. 100% delirious, guaranteed. You turn the map 100% delirious without even putting the orbs on it. You can make the player get more and more unstable on killing until they eventually just detonate and, and explode and go into Void League. Guess what? If you have a Void League modifier, along with all their inventory and equipment. Look at this. 50% reduced movement speed and travel skills are disabled. Shroudwalker, this is an arch nemesis mod. It makes you teleport around unpredictably. You can make this player have this teleport effect and then make them go into this mod here, Cyrus's massive red DOT storms, and then have them go into the void and obliterate themselves. No one would run that, right? And I'm pretty sure some people are going to make this. Here's one. Portals close over time. This will make you feel rushed all the time. It takes all the fun out of it, right? You can add 100% Fizz and LA Reflect. You can have players deal 500% increased damage when dead. They're going to pair that, of course, with the one portal. Right? You can add rituals, but you cannot recover your life or energy shield above 50% during the rituals. And you have to complete them to get the Mage Blood reward in this case. Finally here, monsters can only be damaged while within 2 meters of a player. That's great for a tornado shot build, a trap build, or a brand build, right? Have to be within two meters of the feared. Get a load of this map possibility I could make. I could make it right now. You have the feared, you have the Cyrus Storms, 
and you must be near enemies to damage them, and you have 50% reduced movement speed and cannot use travel skills, and you're 100% delirious. Oh, and by the way, you will go to Void League, not if, but when you die. So I could submit this, you know, but um, I didn't want to make this map cursed. I wanted this map to be a representation of my favorite PoE content, and that if somebody gets this, to know this is made by a player who enjoyed this particular content. To represent me, RPG Gigan, I also wanted someone to see it and say, this would be fun to try to run. So first off, I didn't want any nerfs to the player running it. You could go in with your build setup and play it with your build style, uh, because that represents me. I'm somebody that's always created and runs my own builds. Every single league. Sometimes they're inspired by other builds, but I always do my own tree, my own mod setup. Every character, every league. So no nerfs to the character. We need to now decide, okay, what map should this be on? One of my favorite maps by its design is Vault Map. You have to open the four levers, face those released mobs, then open up the vault and fight a giant stone golem. The design of the map is very cool. And I like that uh, there's all this gold at the end. It's like this massive vault of gold all over the place. And we have no reason to pick it up. It has absolutely no value to us because there is no gold as a currency in PoE. I find it ironic. Um, and then there's this uh, giant Mosasaur skeleton uh, against the treasure backdrop. Um, and then, of course, you can scavenge through these treasure piles hoping for loot that you'll never get. But um, it's a cool design. It's aesthetically very nice. I think it'd be fun to add some content to this map. To fit the vault map theme, I wanted the unique reward itself and the map color to be this gold celestial aureate color. Now, uh, for the reward itself, most people would be putting mage bloods or headhunters. Uh, and I thought about it, but to represent that I'm now a Flicker Strike fan, I decided the shiny foil will be the replica feral's fur, which is still a very high valued item. A shiny gold aureate replica feral's fur. I tried putting another Valdo's Puzzle Box as a reward. I thought that would be funny, but um, it's not available. Uh, and now for the mods and the flavor text for the mods. Well, my favorite endgame boss fights, they are Uber Ziri, they're the Maven, um, and I really enjoyed the form. I like fighting the Shaper Guardians. It's the fight with the Minotaur, the Hydra, the Phoenix, and the Chimera. So let's put the formed on there, not the feared, but the formed. That sounds fun, uh, fighting Minotaur in the vault. And let's have apparitions of Edziri. Uh, let's have her pester us while we're trying to clear out these Shaper Guardians. I didn't want the feeling of a timer on us while we're playing the map, uh, but this way we have to watch the ground and our positioning for that additional challenge. Didn't want it to be too easy. And it makes the map a bit more common. Each time you add a more difficult mod, it makes the map drop more common. I decided not to have Maven also pester us, uh, since we're already having to deal with Ziri and all of those mechanics, and I thought, that's not that's less fun. I want this to be fun. I want people to see this and think, I want to try this. It's a good challenge. Uh, now, the very first league that I bought a supportive pack for was Harbinger League. I also enjoy fighting Harbinger mobs. Chance for a Fracturing Shard. Chance for a Mirror Shard. It's never happened yet. Um, I often do buff Harbingers on my Atlas. I have a lot of fond memories as well, running Beachheads and Infused Beachheads with my friend Viper. And so we're going to add a Regal Harbinger, also known as the King Harbinger. Let's add that on. Now, one of my favorite mechanics to run are the Incursion Temples and Alba Missions. I often make small change, selling Locus of Corruption Temples. I had a recent popular video celebrating 10,000 subscribers on my channel where I showcased turning 100C into 10,000C, and the strat did include selling temples. So let's make players have to complete all the Alba Incursions on this map to obtain this Replica Ferals for reward. And the Incursion Architects are all possessed by a tormented spirit to up the challenge. Another Atlas buff I have employed often in past leagues relates to strong boxes, so we're going to add 10 exquisite Val Vessels. Those are always fun to open on the Val Temple map. And what's kind of nice and appealing about these Incursions and strong boxes is that you can deal with the Formed and the Regal Harbinger first, then click on the Alva and the strong box mechanics after when you're ready for them. Now we have one more mod, and reading through, I found the perfect one to tie it all together on this tier 17 map. And that is this one right here. It's Union of Souls. What is what is Union of Souls? It's an old Bloodlines modifier. I'm the guy, remember, who actually used to add Bloodlines to my maps, uh, which makes the mobs purple and ups loot and experience gained. I used to do it mostly for uh, leveling, but also uh, you get a little more loot out of them. I made a video when Bloodlines was removed from the game, uh, Rest in Peace Bloodlines. So this was perfect. And what does Union of Souls do? It means for the magic mobs in the map, killing monsters spreads a debuff within the mob 
to make them larger in size and have more health and area of effect. Which is perfect because we have a lot of mobs going on here. We have the Harbinger mobs, the Strongbox mobs, and then the Incursion mobs. With this beautiful Bloodlines mod to tie it all together, kicking back to Bloodlines. And now, of course, if a person can complete this map, just like when you pick up a Voidborn Reliquary Key, a message will pop up when you get the foiled unique to drop. Let's type it in. The Hydra, Edziri, and Alva, all on one map? Imagine the smell. So there it is, the RPG Gigan map officially added to the game. I look forward to seeing it up for sale and running it myself in the future. Let me know what you think in the comments.